Good morning, everyone. I'm just letting a few more people in from the waiting room and then we'll get started. Um, welcome to our second fireside chat for the New Mexico Tribal Entrepreneurship Enhancement Program. Um, this program is funded by an EDA grant and we're working to kind of connect in tribal communities to the entrepreneurial ecosystem that we have here and throughout New Mexico. Um, but our fireside chats and all our resources aren't only available to tribal entrepreneurs, um, they're available to everyone. So welcome everyone. And today we will be talking about um, transitioning from retail to wholesale and kind of what the differences are. And we have with us one of our tribal liaisons for the program, um, Angelo McHorse. He's the co-owner of Bison Star Naturals, and I'll let him do a brief intro um, of himself, and then we'll get going on our fireside chat. Um, and as we go through um, kind of the questions that I have for Angelo, if any of your own questions pop up, Feel free to add them to the chat, and then we'll also have time at the end um, where Angelo can answer any questions you may have. So without further ado, I'll let Angelo do his intro. Mm. Good morning, everybody. My name is Angelo McCorse. Um, I'm the co-founder of Bison Star Naturals, along with my wife. We're based up here in Taos in northern New Mexico. Um, currently... We are um, have two locations. We're a body care company. We specialize in lotion, liquid soap. Um, we're about to release shampoo, body wash, and a conditioner this year. And um, I love to say that we've been able to grow a small business from a small farmer's market table setting where we started all the way to trade fair floors. Like uh, we're about to be going to the um, Reservation Economic Summit 2023 <clears throat> in Las Vegas, Nevada. And that's going to be an awesome uh, trade fair um, that we're in. And so, you know, we're very excited to be here sharing our uh, entrepreneurial journey with all of our whole entrepreneurial community and um, providing any kind of experience, knowledge, tips and tricks that could be useful for you guys. And, um, you know, maybe some alternative takes um, as far as, you know, doing business and how to do business. And so this uh, retail versus wholesale fireside chat is going to be really fun and exciting because, you know, it's a great way to um, diversify your income streams and grow your business. Thank you, Angelo. So I guess just to get us started, um, what is the difference between wholesale and retail? <clears throat> totally. So retail is where everybody starts. You know, retail is selling your, direct to your customer. Um, whether it be through a brick and mortar um, store you open up, whether it be from an online store, you know, that's direct sales as well, or whether it be like at special events, like kind of how Bison Star started at farmers markets and arts and crafts fairs before we had our brick and mortar um, building. So that's what retail is, is selling directly to the cost customer and um, the profit from retail sales, always 100% of your markup from the cost of your goods sold that you make, that goes directly to you. So your your profits, 100% of your profits go directly to you. And that's why everybody, you know, starts in retail and, you know, has retail as a very integral part of their business is because that's how you can really um, <clears throat> generate some revenue and income for your business. And wholesale is selling to retail businesses. So instead of selling to the individual, you sell to a retail business so they can sell your products off of their shelves. And, um, you know, with wholesale, the profit margin is a little bit smaller. Um, you know, it could be anywhere from 20 to 50 percent um, uh, of the cost of your goods sold, your profit margin. But, um, you know, with wholesale, the reason that you're willing to take a smaller profit margin is because the volume of sales is way higher. You're selling a lot more units. And so, you know, I have a couple examples that we can get into just to highlight the difference um, uh, between, you know, the benefits of uh, retail and wholesale and, um, you know, uh, cost benefit analysis of time and what it takes to, you know, generate those sales. So basically that's the um, difference between retail and wholesale is retail is you're selling direct to the customer. Wholesale is you're selling to other retail businesses. So I'm wondering if you can kind of expand on your own experience and what 
made you decide to switch from retail and venture into wholesale and kind of what that journey was for you um, and just yeah, share your experience with that. Definitely. So um, Bison Star Naturals, like I had mentioned, we started at farmer's markets, you know, we would do like the rail yard artisan market um, in Santa Fe. Um, you know, we would do like little local festivals and, you know, retail sales are great. You know, they're, um, if you start without a brick and mortar, you usually can start doing events like those. And then you can also build a website. And then, you know, it's this past few years, it was great to be able to use social media to create a sales funnel by generating content about you and your business and your story. And then having all that content funnel people to either your website or to um, your place of business or to events that you were going to be attending. And so, you know, retail sales were really great. And, um, of course, it takes a lot of work to do all the retail sales because, you know, you have to be there, um, you know, for every single retail sale, you have to be running the shop, you have to be manning the booth if you go to events or you have to be um, packing and shipping orders if you're getting everything on the um, online. And uh, it's great when you first start because you can, you know, get um, your events together, your online sales together, and then you're busy packing and shipping, you're busy selling to folks, but then you'll notice that you'll find seasons in retail sales. So, you know, it might be very busy, like during the spring, summer, um, or like during the holiday season, during the late fall and into Christmas. And you can find that, you know, there's great times to be in retail, but you'll see that during the different seasons, um, when like retail sales slow down, well, you can think, well, you know, how am I going to get out to the, um, get more out there? How's my brand going to continue to grow when there's not events or when, you know, sales are very slow. And of course, you know, you can always hammer on social media, you know, hammer telling your story, but that's where wholesale is um, a beautiful transition to be able to diversify your income streams because, you know, when you go out and you're doing these events or you're, um, you know, networking at uh, wherever you're at, when you tell people that you own a small business and they have the opportunity to buy retail, you know, that's exciting. But then what if you meet somebody who's a shop owner, somebody who owns their own business or their own retail business or, um, you know, and so you have to let them know it, um, that, well, they might ask you, well, can I buy some of your product to put on my shelf? And this is, I see the questions coming in about um, pricing the wholesale product list. And I see questions coming in about, you know, do you have a, a rep, a broker or somebody to find you these wholesale partnerships? And quick answers to that is yes, I do have a um, wholesale pricing sheet that I always keep in my phone or on hand. So that way I can just send a quick email if anybody ever inquires me. I'll talk about the pricing um, and what that looks like between retail and wholesale. But then also um, currently for Bison Star Naturals, how we've grown is organic growth by um, outreach, by participating in community events, going out to networking events, um, participating in, you know, legislative events. Um, and then also just um, trying to uh, do these trade fairs and do all of these, um, you know, big, big events nationally, because that's how you find these wholesale partnerships. So we've just been representing ourselves. But um, the idea is to be prepared. So um, when we were pricing our products for we were pricing them with retail in mind. Um, but then we were also pricing them right off the bat. We were lucky we had some foresight to price our products. So that way we would be able to win, even though if we did wholesale, we made a, an acceptable profit margin, you know? And so like our acceptable profit margin is um, at the minimum, minimum, minimum is, you know, 20%. Um, but that's if there's a really high volume and we get like a super huge, you know, um, partner that wants, you know, thousands or tens of thousands of units, that's when we can lower our profit margin to give them a better deal. So that way we can move higher volumes of our product because that's what's also really awesome about um, wholesale partnerships is imagine all these wholesale partnerships are like your mastermind team that help you get that your product out there even more in all these untapped networks that you can't physically be at or be a part of. And if you have a good story and if you have an awesome product, you know, the wholesale partnerships will see, recognize your story, recognize your product, buy into you. And then 
what's nice about wholesale is that since they've bought the product outright, they have skin in the game. So it's up to them to sell that product. And therefore they have some like kind of um, equity in making sure that they sell the product. So they'll promote your business. They'll promote your story. They'll promote you and your product. And um, that's another great way to, uh, you know, get your um, business growing because whether you know it or not, wholesale also drives your retail at the end of the day, because, you know, when you get a big order out there to put your stuff on somebody else's shelves, they start selling it. Somebody really likes the product. If they don't want to go to where they bought it from, they'll look on the bottle and then they'll see the website and they'll say, okay, cool. I'll order online directly or start following, you know, the company that is doing the, um, that the product comes from. So, you know, um, for Bison Star, us getting into wholesale, it kind of naturally occurred when we noticed the volume of people asking us if we had wholesale available at all these different events. But then also during the slow seasons, we recognized that if you have a large network of wholesale partnerships, they can pull you through the slow seasons because they're constantly ordering, you know, whether it's once a year for really big accounts, whether it's, you know, uh, quarterly you know, monthly, bi-monthly. So, um, you know, it's always good to just keep having wholesale in your mind if your product or your art, you know, has the ability to, um, if you have the ability to do wholesale, um, it's it's really awesome because it gives you um, some income to look forward to because usually you schedule your ordering with your bigger wholesale accounts so that way you kind of have some foresight and knowledge ahead of time, um, you know, of uh, what your window of delivery will be. So it's, it's really you know, an awesome way to diversify your, your revenue streams, you know, wholesale. So can you kind of walk us through the process of like what someone needs to do and what they need to be thinking about um, when they're starting to transition from retail to wholesale? Like, how do they go about that? Yes, definitely. So um, <clears throat> think about it this way. It, it takes the same amount of energy to sell one of your products to somebody as it does to sell a hundred of them to somebody. And so you got to think about it in a marketing mind and you can also put it out there, like think to yourself and, you know, talk about it like, okay, I want to start doing wholesale. How am I going to price my goods? Make sure you price your goods. You know, you want to be like I was saying, pe people price their goods anywhere from, you know, doubling their cost of goods sold all the way to like 10, 50 X. I mean, you know, just depends on your economies of scale, where you're at, what kind of product you have. So you can really, you know, price your products at the beginning, wherever you want. Um, but of course, um, you know, you make sure that uh, when you're, when you price your products, you want to be able to um, have a scale um, so let's just, let's just use that 20 to 50% profit margin for wholesale that I mentioned. So like, you know, anybody who is, um, going to buy the minimum mixture when you do wholesale, you have minimum, uh, quantities for the wholesale products that you'll be selling. So that way nobody can get, um, get you by buying just a few products for your wholesale pricing. And then you end up losing out, right? That's not the point. That's not how wholesale works. You have to have minimum product quantities. So that way you make that 20 to 50% profit margin, like I'm talking about to get out all those units. And like I was saying, if you have somebody who's just starting, barely getting your minimum product quantities, you, you know, mark up your stuff for them to get your 50% uh, profit margin for whatever the order is. So say you get a huge account, right? And they're ordering thousands of uh, units. And then you can find a number between that 20% and 50% that you're comfortable with and they're comfortable with to be able to um, give them a deal, pass on some savings to them. But you still, you know, have your rule of like our rule is 20% minimum profit margin. You don't break that. If you if they want lower than that, sorry, you just can't do business. It's okay to say no to wholesale too, because sometimes people are just trying to get like the lowest possible price you know, and um, make sure to value yourself highly, have standards for your pricing for yourself and your art and your work and your products, you know, have rules for yourself where you don't budge um, for those prices, because, you know, people will try to break you down, people will try to, you know, talk you down. And but that's why you make your rules. And you say, you know, I'm not going to settle for anything less than 20%. And, uh, you know, uh, to 100% and you have all that wiggle room to play with, you know, but um, I, I just want to emphasize 
make sure you guys believe in yourself, believe in your product, believe in your art, price yourself accordingly. Make sure to put in, consider all the materials you used, consider all the labor you, and time you put in to produce that art or produce that product. And that's how you find out what your cost of goods sold is. And then once you know your cost of goods sold, you can double it, you know, for, uh, your retail anywhere from doubling it to five to 10 X, depending on what your art is or what your product is. And then also just remember to prepare your mentally, like prepare yourself to create that wholesale um, price markup, whether it's with your 20% margin price, your 50% margin price, and then, you know, do it by 10% increments or whatever. So that way you have different prices between 20 and 50%. So that way, you know, and, and with those price increments, increase your minimum quantities, you know, so at 50% is your minimum quantity. When you get down to 20%, your minimum quantity has to be really high for people to get that, you know, for you to let go of your profits like that, you have to be selling huge volume. So, you know, don't forget that, that those are some gems there. It's important about how to price your products for wholesale and how to like negotiate a deal. So that way, both of you guys win, make sure you set your minimums where you won't go any lower, you know, and uh, make sure you set your mat, your, your, um, you know, your retail high above your cost of goods sold. So you have a lot of room to um, negotiate in there, um, whether it's retail or wholesale and um, um, marketing, you know, whenever you are talking to people, you say, Oh, I have a business. I have these great products and you make sure to mention, and I also can wholesale these products and you, you identify the products you can wholesale and you mention them. And most of the time they're your best bread and butter, like, you know, the products that are, you go through the highest volume of sales, um, you know, like your flagship products. Those are usually the ones that you want to start to wholesale or your particular art style or a particular size of painting or like, you know, a particular style, simple style of ring jewelry. And um, so, you know, for us, we're a body care products company, so we can make, you know, lotion and big batches and bottle it and label it. And we can have huge inventories of our product depending on the batch size that we do. And I understand it's different for like painters or jewelers or anybody um, like that. And so, you know, I'll give you an example of a jeweler that is a successful um, wholesale partner with Bison Star. His name is Lyle. He has Lyle's Creations. He's got a shop here at Taos Plaza. Check him out. He's awesome. Great silversmith. Beautiful jewelry. But he started out before he had his shop and years ago when he was first starting, he would he started by making us little buffalo nickel earrings where they're like, you know, buffalo silver buffalo nickels where he would just round them out, drill a hole in them, put some hoops in them. We'd buy them from him for $10 a piece list he would sell us like you know 10 pairs 20 pairs whatever 30 pairs he would get paid right away you know it would only cost him like two bucks to make these you know earrings for us at the end of the day including his material his cost his shipping you know all that and so he was crushing it you know he would make a 5x on his um you know cost of a good sold even for a wholesale price you know so he's doing great and so if he were to sell these earrings twenty dollars in his shop he'd be making a 10x you know on on one pair of like on one product which is a pair of buffalo nickel earrings so that's great because we buy these wholesale products outright he gets his money right away for all of his labor his cost of goods sold and um you know the retailer us we get to double his price that we bought him from so we sell them for 20 we bought them for 10, you know, we make, we do that hundred percent markup and then he gets his basically like his 500% markup or whatever, 400%, you know, so he's doing great at his wholesale rate. So there's ways to price your products to know, um, you know, um, spot a good deal when you see one. And I saw, I saw a question in the chat about, um, um, the marketing, um, and how much do we spend per month to hold, acquire wholesale accounts. And so, you know, I think that um, we do we do events every month, basically, and that can be from like one to two to even three events sometimes, like one a weekend. And um, these events range in price from like, you know, hundreds to thousands of dollars. So I think that we'd spend probably like a few thousand dollars a month on um, – I would consider that marketing costs because they're the booth fees and the entrance fees to get into these venues where these um, potential wholesale partners are walking around looking for new products and looking for, you know, stuff that you have to offer. Um, those are all buy-ins. Those are all acquisition costs for new wholesale customers to me. Um, I can't put a dollar sign per wholesale partnership that we spend. You know what I mean? But I'm 
if I were to guess, I know it would be in the hundreds of dollars per head that we acquire, you know, but we do have over 60 wholesale partnerships across the nation right now. And we've built those up over the last uh, three years, um, traveling around. And um, so like for us, the most successful events where we find a lot of these, um, uh, where we convert a lot of these wholesale partnerships to actually doing business is through like regional, the regional economic summits so any economic summit you can find anywhere regional nationwide whatever um uh, indian gaming for us is great because um there's a lot of uh, hotels um um resort stores spa stores places where our body care products can fit into and then um we also do like um the museums trade fairs because we do fit really well in that niche market our body care products are all southwest essence like um you know we work with sage pine and cedar and so a lot of um, the southwest museums love to carry our products um they do well in there so we do museum shows but um the most successful events are going to be trade fairs um and uh, what's also cool is that just a heads up is that a lot of trade fairs they have artisan markets on the side of the trade fair. And so don't be afraid to like try to jump in an artisan market. If you have a product that has wholesale potential, start there. And then you can work your way to the trade fair floor because that's, you know, what Bison Star has been able to do is we started out because the buy-in for the trade artisan market trade, um, the artisan market of the trade fairs, those are cheaper buy-ins than being in the actual trade fair floors. And I'm talking about like, the artisan markets are hundreds of dollars instead of like being on the trade fair floor, you got to pay thousands of dollars to be on the trade fair floor. Um, but of course, like I was saying, that's just the price and the cost you have to pay to acquire these wholesale partners is you got to buy in, you know, you got to market your self by having a really nice table, really nice banners, focusing on your wholesale um, product offerings. You have your sheets with your wholesale line items ready to go. You have your um, <clears throat> contact information, you know, that says your name wholesale with a number and an email. And, you know, that's what it is. That's what you're doing. That's, that's, that's what you're there to do. So um, marketing is very important. Think about that. Have your, have your marketing brain on when you're transitioning from retail to wholesale, because it's a, it's a different trip. You're going after a different customer than somebody who just wants to like, in our case, use lotion or use soap. We're looking at like, thinking about that business owner or that general manager or that, you know, um, whatever the, the, the resort manager, you know, for hotels. And so, um, that's, that's, what's really cool is, uh, um, when you also, when you, here's just a little gem for everybody out there is that when you get into the wholesale game and you get your, you know, line item, your wholesale sheet, you, you have all your pricing done, you know, you're going to this event, telling everybody about your business, but then also letting them know if they're interested that you do wholesale. Here's one other thing is if you're at the wholesale level of business and you know how to price your products, you already can tell them that you can offer a service to, you know, do gift fulfillment. So that's a cool thing too, because, you know, if uh, you're already doing wholesale business to business to for people to do retail sales, Remember that it's also great that your customers are also like nonprofits or chairman of different tribes or reservations or, or legislative executive people, um, because they all have budgets for gifting for holidays and for special events and for all this stuff. So like if you have your wholesale game in check and you have your prices, you can also offer a cool service to, you know, do gifting services for um, these people as well, these different types of customer that you have to be thinking about. So that's just a little gem, you know, maybe some of you can apply it. Um, but Bison Star has had a lot of uh, success with that as well. And I'm just thinking that's probably where um, like customer discovery really comes in as well, because you need to be thinking like, okay, which types of businesses am I going to target? Which ones will be good wholesale partners like depending on your product and what you're trying to sell like certain trade shows might not make sense for you to attend but others will so um correct me if i'm wrong but probably just doing your research on those events and like what who will be there and what they specialize in would probably help find the right types of partners and like you said, think outside the box too, because you might, there might be wholesaler 
sale partners out there that you might not even have thought of like as a possibility. Yeah, totally. Um, I mean, I agree. And that's what's so cool is sometimes you just have to jump in there, do a show. If you think it's relevant to you and it looks like a good idea, but you're not completely sure, I wouldn't say like, don't tiptoe around it. Just try it. If you can afford it, it's not going to hurt you financially. Buy into an event, try it. And then when you display your product or your art or whatever you have, you'll see what else is at that market or that trade fair. And then you can also talk to your neighbor and talk to your people, talk to other people at the trade fairs and, um, you know, be friendly, be cool, put out a good vibe. You want to represent yourself and your business in a good way. So people want to do business with you. And then also at the same time, people will just want to share information with you. So they might look at your product or look at what you have to offer and say, Oh, this show might be really good for you. Or I know that these, you know, people are looking for this or this organization was asking for that at this last show. So don't, don't underestimate your neighbors at events that you go to. If you just buy in, you know, the whole experience is going to give you more knowledge and, um, you know, more, more information to move forward, to help you, you know, get into wholesale or get into these, um, you know, places where, the, the buyers are going to be for your products. And when I mean buyers, I mean like wholesale partners, if you're, if you're going that route. There is a question in the chat. Um, does your wholesale rep get paid per hour or percentage of account ordered? So, yeah, that's something that we've been working out and um, it's seeming like the best way to do that is a percentage, you know, like a commission. And so um, currently we're working with a company um, and they are, asking for 5% of all the gross, um, you know, wholesale, the gross revenue number. So like, you know, if we sell a thousand dollars, they're asking for 5% of that, you know, if they were, um, the primary referral for that, you know, turnover for that conversion. So for that sale, so I'm trying to say, so, um, yeah, 5% is, uh, what we've agreed to give, you know, this one company for being a wholesale rep for us. So we don't pay them and they only get paid like commission, basically a 5% whenever they make a sale for us. And so these guys are very established and they're hunting for big dollar, big figure sales, you know, so that way that 5% really, you know, is worth it for them. But at the end of the day, if you have a, a, wholesale rep company or a brokerage company like that to introduce small businesses to these big buyers, that's easy money where it's just a referral, you know, and you get 5% of any huge deal or whatever. So that's cool. You know, that's, that's also a cool career opportunity too. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I definitely, um, that's a good question. 5% in commission basically. And uh, the, it's, it's MHG group, I believe. Um, but I can look at that real quick. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's the name of the company, but there's a lot of them out there and they'll all vary, you know, some, some want bigger pieces of the, um, pie, you know, um, and I do have a, um, example of a wholesale sheet. Um, but for, for, for general, general information for wholesale pricing, um, like, I don't know if you just want to look at the wholesale sheet and see what that looks like, what the structure or format of it is, but, or if you're curious, more curious about the pricing, but you know, there's a term in, um, business that's called cornerstone pricing, you know, where your, your cornerstone pricing is basically double of your, co your cost of goods sold, you know? So like if somebody comes up to you and, you know, asks if they want to do wholesale and they, op they ask about your pricing and you can just tell them, Oh, we operate off of cornerstone pricing. Then if they know, and they've done wholesale before, they'll be familiar with that term and they'll know that you're just marking your product 50 up 100% from the cost of goods sold. So, you know, if your product costs five bucks to make, you're selling it for 10, that's your, um, your markup is a hundred percent. And that is, you know, twice the cost of goods sold, which is cornerstone pricing. That's what they call, you know, cornerstone pricing is increasing your, um, your profit margin by 100%. So, um, that's just something to know. So like for, for, you know, for us, like a $10 bottle of lotion, we sell it wholesale for $6 and then the retailer can sell it for 10 to 12, depending on what they want to sell it for, you know, and uh, our product sells great and it's in demand. So, you know, everybody sells it for 12, our little bottles and people buy it or 10, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's uh, cause uh, that's why you make your rules as the business to have a minimum acceptable profit margin for wholesale and don't ever break that, you know? 
Um, but yeah, cornerstone pricing is a, uh, is a, is a term that you guys should know if you're going to start doing wholesale. I think that's, um, really good advice. And I know you kind of already touched on it, but I know, um, from some of the people I've spoken to, um, really having a hard time, like kind of finding that sweet spot price, um, for example, this one individual, um, she tried wholesale and she felt like um, she was she wasn't making money. So, would you say she wasn't pricing it correctly? And like, how can you like how do you gauge that? I guess is my question. Sure. So, just and uh, you already um, touched on it, but just kind yeah of to further. Great, great. I love that. So. You take into account your cost of goods sold. So COGS, you're going to hear that COGS, C-O-G-S, your cost of goods sold. So um, like I'll just use my product as an example. So that way you guys understand what I'm talking about. And I'll um, use the product of a, a, a little lotion. Oh, man, I don't have mine on my desk right there. But um, anyway, it's a, a little lotion and uh, it's a two ounce lotion. Sorry, I'm just looking to see if I have one right quick near me um but i have an i have a lotion right and uh it costs me well like you know um so depending on economies of scale right but where i'm at currently it's gonna cost me about like two dollars and a quarter to make my little two ounce lotion right and then so for my for my retail price we sell let's just for simple for simplicity my two ounce lotion, it costs $2 to make. Okay. And then I, my retail price for that is $8. Okay. And so I've basically, you know, I do a 300%. So, you know, for every $2, for, for every $2 I sell, I should be getting six bucks in profit if it's retail. Okay. And then like, if it's, um, if when I'm doing wholesale, I sell that for $5, right. So my, my, Re my wholesale price for that lotion bottle that costs me two dollars is five bucks and then the retailer can sell it for ten to twelve dollars depending on whatever they want to they want to do and so um of course you as a business you're always going to have the cheapest retail price of anybody you know and only like if you sell to walmart they're going to want to beat you by two cents or something like that you know what i mean your price but then at that point it's a whole different ball game where your economies of scale are way higher, you know, your acceptable profit margins change as you grow bigger with economies of scale, you know, and all that. So um, anyway, that's just a simple example for me. My lotion, my two ounce lotion costs two bucks. I sell it retail for eight bucks. I sell it wholesale for five bucks. Then the retailer who resells it can sell it anywhere from, you know, eight to $12, just depending on what they want to do. If they want to double the price that they bought it at, or they have a profit margin between like 50 and 100% that they want to, you know, is good for them. But of course, they're going to opt for 100% and just do cornerstone pricing and double the price that they get it at. So, you know, that's kind of how it works. That's why when you, when you think about your wholesale pricing, you know, you make sure that, like I was saying, you know, you, you one at you two X to 10 X your, for your retail and you 2x to like, you know, 3x for your wholesale, you know, just so that way you have your minimum acceptable price margins, you know. And so like because because uh, the reason that my product is priced a 3x for my wholesale is so that way that's that's at the minimum. Like if, if somebody wants to buy two dozen of these little lotions, they get charged six bucks a piece or I'm excuse me, five dollars a piece for for each of those little lotions but then like if a huge company comes in let's just say whole foods and they want to buy you know a thousand of these lotions well then you know if they want to buy a thousand then if my 20 percent minimum profit margin rule for moving that huge amount of volume is in play well then i'm willing to make my price go down to two dollars and 40 cents a bottle because it's just 40 40 cents on top of the two dollars that it costs me right so my profit margin is 20 percent with that 40 cents but i'm moving you know, a thousand to 10,000 bottles. So that's 40 cents times a thousand or like, you know, times 10,000, you know? So you want to be able to make sure that you have a minimum profit margin for super high volume. 
And then you want to make sure to like, you know, two, three, four X your cost of goods sold for your minimum. Right. And then you want to two to 10 X for your retail pricing. So, so this is where you guys, those are the numbers. Those are the like figures and the windows of pricing that I would, you know, from my experience, what we've done, but like, you know, you guys, um, value yourselves don't be afraid to say what you really want don't be afraid to use these ranges and numbers i'm putting for your products and even if you're like oh man that looks like too much or oh man will somebody really buy that for me and sell it double at that price don't ever second question don't ever doubt yourself don't you know because it's like here's the secret guys is like what you ask is what you get what you put out there is what's going to come to you so don't sell yourself short don't ever you know think oh that's not a value and here's the other thing you 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 can't look at your product or look at things out there and be like would i buy this because because you're not the one buying it <laughs> the customer is you know so your thought about valuing your product is always going to be really low but the customer would be really willing to pay a lot more than you think so that's a little gem there too value yourself price yourself at a good level and then here's the beautiful part is that if you find that you're pricing yourself too high and that nothing's moving, it's a lot easier to slightly do incremental decreases in your price than it is to incrementally increase your price. That's really good advice. Um, and I think that's um, kind of where I'm going to end with my questions. So I want to open it up to anyone on the um online now um if you want to just unmute yourselves if you have any more questions for angelo or type it into the chat um feel free um but i'm kind of done with my question section now so um, <laughs> feel free to ask any questions you guys have right now so i see uh marilyn asks um do you have a minimum order for wholesale customers to get this pricing and so yes that's exactly what i was talking about okay so like, um, you know, for, for, for me, like, uh, you know, I have minimum, so I have a two ounce wholesale product. That's a lotion. And I do like, you know, you have to get 24 of those minimum at five bucks to get in at that $5 wholesale price. Right. But then like, let's just say, um, the old faithful guys are gift shop, um, that goes through way more volume. They get a better wholesale price right? Than that $5. Okay. And so, um, cause they buy a lot more. So my, my thing is set your minimums of, you know, whether it be, you know, um, depending on what kind of product you have for us, little two ounce bottles of lotion, they're about this big and like this round, you know, that tall. And they're, uh, we, we just do 24, um, minimums because that's what fits in a nice little case and a nice little box you know so we do 24 minimums of each cent and so um you know the minimum buy-in for our company isn't really that high it's like for a good starting order it's like you know 600 bucks and people can get started with bison star having a nice um three four products with a nice little display so you know um Think about like what your uh, best sellers are. Don't forget to recommend when you do start making these wholesale partnerships, people are going to want to order, you know, random things, random wholesale products that you offer. But I would suggest you guide them to your best sellers and you tell them what your best products are and why that they would want to carry those, um, you know, because people are most familiar. Those are highest sellers. Um, so guide your wholesale partnerships to the products that uh, move the best because you want your stuff to move in their stores so that way they'll continue to reorder and your partnership will be established um, and, and make sure that when you do um, establish these wholesale partnerships, be fast with your communication, be concise and direct. Don't be playing back and forth with your emails, you know, send your wholesale sheet right away. They'll send you an order and you next thing you tell them is it's shipped. Don't be telling them anything else. You know what I mean? Just like make your communications fast, direct, concise, and, um, you know, uh, speed is and consistency are really great things to remember in the wholesale partnership game because the bigger wholesale partnerships you get, the more rules you'll have to follow according to them, how they want, where they want to receive it, what time limits they want to receive it in, you know, and um, be weary. Just one last tip on wholesale is that a lot of accounts will, 
not pay you right away when you do a wholesale deal they'll ask for net 15 or net 30 payment terms and that just means you know wait 15 days after they receive the product and and then their payments due that's net 15 or net 30 is waiting 30 days after their um, they receive their products and um, that's just because it, it allows big wholesalers to get your products on their shelf so they can sell it start making revenues to hopefully be able to you know pay you back um, and then and then um, that's just how it works with these really big companies is um, they'll put you on long payment terms so you know in, in order to do wholesale you need to have working capital um, high inventory and be able to like defer your payment for like 15 to 30 days those are just a couple norms that happen in the wholesale game so you guys know that if you're doing wholesale um little shops most likely will pay you right away but huge accounts that are getting hundreds or thousands of units of yours they're going to take net 15 to net 30 so just remember that as well and um um i see uh, some questions here sales and wholesale which seems to be more profitable um, since you get more profit direct to consumer you offer displays with your wholesale accounts is that cost extra great questions great great foresight so um, number one um, retail sales are great you know it's always nice to capture the retail sale when you can and you know to be able to get that money but this is the example i was talking to you about so let's just say you do retail and you do wholesale both are established you have them streamlined somebody calls you right now and they say i want a thousand dollar wholesale order and i'm going to be an account that's going to pay you today right now and you're like oh okay cool um, sure, let's do that. You're, it's a thousand dollar order. Um, let's just say for example sake, that qualifies for my best rate. So I'm just going to get a 20% profit margin, right? And so you, you received a thousand dollars and since your profit margin is only 20%, it costs you $800 to make that, but you made $200. So it cost you 800 bucks. You made 200 bucks. You're done. The money is directly transferred into your bank, you're straight. You you have your 800 cost of goods sold, you have your $200 profit today, right now, right? That's how a wholesale sale looks like. But then it's like, okay, you have a brick and mortar shop or an online store, however you think about it, and it takes you a week to make $1,000, right? And so even though that's retail, that means that you, know, you have 100% profit, which means if you make $1,000, that means it cost you $500 to make your products. You made $500 over the week, the whole week, right? But then yet you still have to fulfill those orders. So you still have to do packing and shipping. You still have to pay overhead for your brick and mortar or for running your, you know, online retail shop. Um, and you still have to like uh, pay Square or your, your, your service acceptor, your payment processor or whatever, a fee. So like, you know, that $1,000, yeah, you made a thousand bucks over a week and you made $500 profit, but you also have to factor in from that $500 profit. You're going to have to also, you know, take out the packing and shipping. You're going to have to take out the time and effort for every single one of those, you know, um, customers that you had to deal with. And like, so when you think about it, you know, would you make $200 like two once once a day would you make would you rather make two hundred dollars like two to three times a week and make 600 bucks for just two to three quick transactions or would you would you rather wait a whole week to make 500 bucks and have all this busy work in between so both are valuable and both are awesome and both have their benefits and their drawbacks you know but in my mind it takes the same amount of energy to for one transaction of a thousand dollars than like 20 transactions over a week for a that i mean for then one transaction for like ten dollars you know and that's one of 20 out of the whole week or whatever you know so um wholesaling is great because it just you you make your your volume of your products move you you go through higher volumes of your product and like we were saying the the higher volumes of your product or art that's out there the more people see it, the more people use it, the higher chances that people know you, your brand, your art, and want to reorder or go find you or, you know, so there's a lot of residual business that comes um, from that wholesale as well, not just that $200 profit right in one instant, you know, there's a lot of residual business that comes from that as well. So I hope that um, 
example kind of helps and shows like, you know, the differences of cost benefit. Um, so, um, and then do we offer displays for our wholesale accounts? And so I would say that's a great question. When we first started wholesale, we tried to get really fancy and make these little cedar planks with holes, you know, kind of routed into them that our lotions would fit in that we try to give to wholesale accounts. But once we passed like 10 accounts, we we're like, man, this isn't, this isn't feasible. We're not going to be able to give everybody a nice piece of wood. That's all like a whole product in itself just to display our stuff. So we decided to just nix the display and we leave it up to the wholesale wholesaler, um, you know, the whole the retailer, business retailer to, to make their own displays. And a lot of the times people will want um to di display stuff in their own way. But like for us, it's smart for us to make um like a little package for our lotions or lip balms that can just easily be popped open and the lid can be flipped backwards that has all of our information on it. So that way that can just be set right by the cash register. You know what I mean? So that way it's like its own contained little box slash display with our product in it that can be set by the cash register. That's where we fit. That's how, what kind of, you know, um, display that we would offer. But you know, if somebody has a really nice glass case and they want to like display stuff in it and, you know, by all means, you let the retailer do what they want to do. Um, but, you know, it's not necessary. You don't have to um, supply a uh, display for people. And, um, you know, that's a, it's just, it's just in business. It's easy to um, say all you provide is your product. <laughs> you don't want to do anything like extra stuff. I mean, sometimes when you're starting, yeah. But as you get more developed and, you know, you'll realize that's kind of busy work that you don't really, an extra cost that doesn't really add value too much. And if a display is going to make or break a wholesale partnership, I don't think it's worth it in the first place. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, I just want to comment on kind of some of what you've said. I think you've really been able to touch on like the importance of both retail and wholesale. And I think that speaks to the importance of having um, like diversified income streams. Um, you don't, I mean, you can do just one or the other, but having both kind of takes you to that next level in business um, and just kind of starts opening more doors and pathways for you. And then I was also just thinking like how you were seeing um, time is money as well, you know? So if you can make that wholesale um, you're also saving some of your time um, and making that money um, with less time and effort in some ways. Um, but then I was also thinking about all the marketing benefits of making all those wholesale partners, because then you have these people who are purchasing your products, so you get you get that profit, but then your stuff is going to be in all these different shops, you know, and then people yeah, they might just go buy at that shop. But I know myself, sometimes like I see something and then I'm like, well, maybe I can get it online. You know, like I'm at the store right now. Um, so it's kind of like a pathway. You have this wholesale partnership. They buy the product in the store, but then they're not going to that store every day. But if they really like your product, then they might be like, well, maybe I'll see if I can buy it online. Um, and so it's just really... Um, I see all the benefits to like, you're not getting free marketing, but you kind of are getting free marketing through wholesale. So yeah, yeah, I, I love that. You know, I love thinking of my um, wholesale partnerships as like my mastermind team, because these are all like minded individuals who are trying to create a shop or a business or an entity that attracts people and generates revenue and sales. And so um, one tip is that um, you most definitely value your wholesale partnerships and you definitely promote your wholesale partnerships on your website because like if somebody goes to your website and they don't want to order like you know if they have an older generation that doesn't want to do online ordering or over the phone or whatever if you're at one of the museums or cultural centers near where they live they're going to look at your website and if you have a wholesale partnerships page that shows where you're at in all different states people can find you locally like that and then we also 
sometimes take it a step further. And like, so when we, when we got into Yellowstone, um, old faithful geyser Nash, uh, gift shop in the Yellowstone national park, my family and I, we decided, Hey, let's go camping at Yellowstone to go see our product. And the whole time we were capturing all this content, making all this content, tagging Yellowstone. I mean, we snagged that whole hashtag and that we dominated that for the whole week we were there, you know, just doing product placement around buffaloes and geysers and springs and everything and like yellowstone national park and their gift shop they recognized our efforts and that made that solidified our partnership even more because they saw that they're supporting this you know business with awesome products that's a small family owned thing but then hey this family is also coming out here seeing their products making it an adventure making it fun because we're providing value for their platforms and their social media where they shared a lot of our stuff and two, so make it fun, you know, definitely make your promotion of your wholesale partnerships fun. And what's really cool is a lot of the times um, it's really valuable for you to put in that extra legwork on your end, because sometimes these wholesale partnerships have a lot more prestige, credibility and validity than you do as a small business. So when you, you know, highlight them through your platforms, you're going to kind of ride their coattails and a lot of followers will migrate to your platform if it's not vice versa. But most of the time, if you get a whole a big wholesale partnership, you know, the cross pollination between all the socials is going to be great. And you guys are both going to add to your follower counts and um, customer interaction and, you know, community interaction on both of all of your socials. So, you know, that's, that's awesome. Definitely promote your wholesale partnerships on the website. I love that. It's just like, you know, I mean, in business, there is a level of competition, but then also just that businesses supporting businesses um, and just working together. It's It kind of reminds me of the whole rainforest ecosystem concept that we have here at UNM Rainforest Innovations is just creating all those connections and then just letting them bloom and flourish. So I really like that. Um, I don't know if anyone else has any more questions or if, Angela, you have um, some last things you want to leave us with um, before we run out of time here. Yes. Um, I think my most important uh, word of advice is make sure you price your um, products accordingly and rewatch the portion of this video where I talk about pricing your stuff and really listen and try to hear that because um, that's the most first crucial step to any business, not only in retail, because you want to price your stuff really good. So you make good margins retail, but then also you want to price them to where you win in the wholesale, you know, because that gives you this huge window of negotiating your product price where, where you still win, even if it's at the lowest you know lowest acceptable profit margin you put as a rule for yourself and your art or your product you know so price yourself really good number one and then just number two you know be authentic tell your story share your how you do your work document instead of create try to build up your social platforms because a lot of the times these wholesale partnerships are going to like try your product, but then they're also going to like look at your socials, look at your website. They're going to kind of look at how you look as a business. And that has a lot of, holds a lot of water and has a lot of push when they're deciding what company they want to go with, you know? And so uh, it's, it's a good to try to, <clears throat> you know, stay, stay active on all your socials and your marketing. Um, so that way you stay relevant because, you know, businesses, wholesale, retail wholesalers or retail businesses want relevant, cool, you know, uh, even like trendy products. So make sure you stay on top of your storytelling. Well, thank you so much, Angelo. Um, this was really awesome. And I hope everyone who's with us um, got some value out of it. The recording will be emailed to you and posted on our YouTube. And then we're also working on getting our podcast up. And once we get that, it'll be posted to that as well. Um, I did put my email in the chat. If you want to connect further with me, um, I can also connect you with Angelo. Um, and then I also put a link um, to an upcoming B2B expo that they're having here in Albuquerque. Um, so it's very relevant to both 
January's fireside chat, which was on artists and markets and trade shows, and then this fireside chat on retail and wholesale. So if you are wanting to kind of take that leap and start exploring um, and looking for opportunities for wholesale, I think um, just being in Albuquerque, this B2B Expo might be a good first step for you. Um, so I just put that in the chat in case anyone's interested. And again, feel free to reach out to me with any questions and I um, will always respond um, and connect you into whatever you need as best as I can. Um, so thank you so much. And I think our March fireside chat is going to be on leadership and how entrepreneurs can benefit from like leadership and mentoring and coaching. Um, so stay tuned for that. And I hope to see you guys there. So thank you. Right on. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm. Have a great afternoon.